السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. My writings from the 1990s. Among the writings is a book called The Possession of Izzan. While I was doing research on exorcism and possession, etc., as I mentioned before, my PhD thesis, which I completed in 1993, was on the topic of the exorcist tradition in Islam. So I had traveled to different countries, among them Sri Lanka, to check out information concerning exorcism and possession, etc., etc. While in Sri Lanka, I came across a case which had caught the attention of the nation. A little boy, some three years old, from a Muslim family, had begun to speak in the language of the Hindus, offering worship the way that Hindus did. And he became a focal point. Uh, people believed that he was a reincarnation. And people from all over India were coming to Sri Lanka to visit this boy, bringing gifts, etc., etc. While I was there, you know, people were asking me what to do. Do we believe this? What to... So I told them, you know, um, we don't believe in reincarnation. So definitely it is not reincarnation. But we should try to see the boy and find out more before making judgments or making statements in this regard. And Alhamdulillah, you know, one amongst the Muslim brothers there had read my book on the fundamentals of Tawheed, in which I talked about cases of people, uh, children, you know, claiming to have had previous lives and people uh, talking to them and them explaining things which only people from that area or that time uh, would have known. So this gave credence to the idea of reincarnation. And this is why it became very popular, his case, the case of the boy whose name was Ezan, became very popular in uh, Sri Lanka. And even the president himself spoke on it and praised and showed how, uh, you know, this was a good sign for the people. He was from Muslim family, yet he's Hindu and this and that and the other. Anyway, I did research on it, gathered information, interviewed the mother and all this, collected it all up. And, uh, you know, I gave advice to brothers there, you know, how to handle the situation. And after gathering up all the information, etc., going back to Riyadh, then on to the UAE, I put the whole material together with all the newspaper clippings and everything else into a, a research which outlined all that had taken place. And then one of the brothers, uh, his wife, is a writer. She's a creative writer, has written fictional stories and stuff like this. So I spoke to her about collaborating with me on doing the book on this child. So she brought the research to life in the book we call The Possession of Izzan, which is really the jinn possession of Izzan. And it's based on body of facts, but how these facts are interpreted and uh, how one should look at what was said, done, etc., requires proper knowledge, Islamic knowledge, etc., and it needs to be uh, assessed and determined what really took place here. Was this a case of reincarnation? Which, in fact, it wasn't. Was it a case of possession? Could have been. 
issues of possession there. And in the end, the child did revert back to his normal Muslim state uh, and lost the ability to speak in the language of the Hindus. So, mashallah, the book, The Possession of Izan, uh, it's been republished by Dawa Corner Bookstore in Malaysia, and uh, it's available from them. Mashallah, this is uh, somewhat we could call it historical fiction because uh, my co author, Sister Halima Jordan, uh, filled in the gaps, you know, creatively. So there is a network of facts, and then the gaps have been filled in to make it, you know, a good reading. Uh, a lot of people who have gotten copies and read it said it, you know, it scared them. <laughs> so if you would like a scare, then inshallah, uh, this book would be for you. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.